Here is my take on 80s home computer magic. As a kid I was blown away by pixel graphics and games like Space Invaders, an alien world and technology to be explored. That's why in this video series I present my own dream home computer, the Minimal 64. To me it's the most computer from the least logic or the shortest way from TTL to Space Invaders. The Minimal 64 doesn't have an integrated CPU, but comes with all the good stuff like VGA output, PS2 support, a serial and expansion port, SSD storage, 64 kilobytes of RAM and a native software environment with an OS, text editor, assembler, Python-like language and games. And it packs double the processing power of a Commodore 64 or VIC-20. Let's enter the Minimal 64 home computer project. So why building another modern home computer? This topic floats in the retro computing community for quite some time and I'm certainly late to the party. There's a sweet spot between simplicity, limitations and performance that lets you code interesting stuff while keeping a closeness to the hardware, a special mixture that sparked the home computer boom of the 1980s. However, the original designs weren't that simple at all and made use of all sorts of custom chips that aren't easy to find nowadays. I recommend a video by David Murray, the 8-bit guy, where David explains his idea of his dream computer. David boils it down to just a few requirements. His dream computer should be built from modern off-the-shelf parts, output VGA, use a PS2 keyboard and feature a 6502 processor have at least 64 kilobytes of RAM and it should run Commodore BASIC. All this preferably without adding additional FPGAs or microcontrollers. His dream became reality and today is called the Commander X16. But as much as I like the X16 and the community effort around it, doesn't a 6502 already count as a microcontroller? And for graphics and sound the X16 ended up using a dedicated FPGA and a Yamaha sound chip, putting its performance well into Amiga territory, losing, to my taste, a fair bit of its home computer vibe. Let me be a bit more puristic and exclude any FPGAs and integrated CPUs. That leaves us with TTL and performance-wise we'd have to aim a little lower. Let's opt for monochrome VGA. It looks cooler anyway. Keep the PS2 keyboard and the 65 kilobytes of RAM, but sacrifice sound for the time being and instead throw in a serial and expansion port so we can add things later. And let's be willing to trade that old-fashioned Commodore BASIC for a more modern Python-like language. You might have come across some of my previous projects here on this channel. In hindsight they all line up quite nicely around these requirements. I did videos about generating VGA 320 by 200 pixels from an Arduino Nano and a single logic IC, about reading out a PS2 keyboard, building a serial UR terminal, a breadboard flash programmer and the predecessor of the current project, the minimal UR CPU. Software-wise the UR CPU already has much in common with the new minimal 64, but communicates through serial I.O. only. But only my latest video unlocked a door to the next level. I managed to push the clock rate of my TTL CPU from below 2 MHz to well above 8 MHz, quadrupling its processing power while simplifying the design even further. I realized that at that speed the CPU could easily generate its own VGA signal while still efficiently executing code. And I decided to push for my dream home computer design from that point onwards. Let's fast forward 8 months of putting it all together and take a look at what we've got. It was roughly 30% hardware and 70% software development. As you can see we only use 56 simple logic ICs and counters. There is no integrated CPU. The two big ICs here on the left are the 64 kilobytes of RAM and half a megabyte of flash memory. On the right we have more flash ICs for the microcode of the CPU's instruction set. What else have we got? The PS2 connector, power and reset, the serial and expansion port and the VGA output. Let's fire it up.
we are greeted by the Minimals logo. Note that this thing technically has no text mode. It's all bitmap graphics, more like the Commodore Amiga than a C64. Let's type in Show Manual. Whew, there's a lot of information here. It says we can use a directory command and type in any file name to start a program. There's a VGA demo, so let's try that. Ok, it seems the minimal is powerful enough to throw a lot of random characters and pixels onto the screen. And it can draw rectangles and lines too. Let's try a bouncing balls demo. The CPU can handle software sprites. We can also load and display a picture. Well, it's some more monochrome pixel aesthetics here, I guess. But what about some games? Of course we have Tetris or Blocks again, but today let's try Invaders. Any idea what that could be? Well, now I have to concentrate. I don't know about you, but I have already forgotten that all this runs just on a bunch of logic chips. Let's zoom out and have a quick look at the spec of the Minimal's tiny hardware. It's a deliberately simple 8-bit design with 16-bit address space. The CPU runs at 8 MHz, but time shares RAM with the VGA circuit, thus effectively running at 6 MHz. The whole thing only has two data registers A and B built-in hardware, but implements another two registers X and Y with microcode tricks. For efficient graphics, the basic logic operations AND and OR are built-in hardware. The rest is implemented with microcode tricks again. And this is it for today. In the next video we'll have some fun programming stuff on the minimal. I'll also release a CycleExact emulator, so you can get your hands on a minimal 64 too. And yeah, I guess we'll also have to try the breadboard prototype, right? Hope to see you next time then. Take care. Bye.